Hey guys, so in today's lecture, we are going to discuss vertical axis wind turbine. That is V A W T. So, as you can see in the diagram, vertical axis wind turbine V A W T. Its main components. So as you can see that uh, here there is a bearing which helps in circular motion then uh, we have cross arm then there is a rotor shaft that is called tower so which supports the whole turbine then there is blades so as you can see the blades are in elliptical shape then there is again bearing in downward direction to give the circular motion to the uh, turbine then there are brakes uh, to stop the stop the wind turbine then there is a gearbox uh, to control the output uh, then there is generator uh, which will generate the electricity and then there is a bearing again and then there is foundation so this is the top view in drawn in the downward direction so as you can see shaft is in the middle and then uh, the blades are on the left and right here and it rotates around the shaft so then on the left there is a grid connection where the electricity will be passed uh, to the grid then there is a switch gear and control mechanism so to control uh, the direction and the speed of the turbine and uh, output of the turbine then there is a support structure to support whole uh, turbine and then there is a, a rope so these are the various components of the vertical axis wind turbine VAWT so uh, let's discuss uh, components in detail so first the rotor shaft or the tower which is in the center this tower is a hollow vertical rotor shaft uh, which rotates freely about its vertical axis between top and bottom bearings so this is a vertical shaft which can rotate in the, in the between the bearings so it is installed above the support structure so the location of this shaft is above the support structure in absence of any load at the top suppose there is no load at the top a very strong tower is not required which greatly simplifies its design the upper part of the tower is supported by by ropes and the height of the tower of a large turbine is around 100 meter so this height will be around 100 meter so then the next component is blades so this blades the next component is blades this blades it has two or three thin and curved blades so there may be two or three it must be very thin and curved blades so the blades are shaped like an egg beater in a profile 
so the blades have an aerofoil cross section so it is an aerofoil cross section with constant cord length the pitch of the blades cannot be changed the diameter of the rotor is slightly less than the tower height so the diameter will be slightly less because uh, then the tower out then there is a support structure so this is the support structure in the between so so this is a support structure so the support structure is provided at the ground to support the whole weight of this rotor generator gearbox brakes and everything that is housed uh, within the structure so as you can see this this all things are housed inside this structure and it also supports the weight of the rotor the weight of this rotor and it houses all the components so that is the function of support structure so now uh, we will discuss uh, different types of rotors so what are the types of rotors used in vertical axis wind turbine so the vertical axis rotors can be either drag or lift based so drag based devices have relatively high torque starting torques and compared to the lift devices so but have relatively low tip to wind speed ratio and lower power outputs for a given size of rotor so uh, here as we can see there are three types of rotor shown so we will discuss one by one so first is cup type rotor so as you can see that the, at the end there is a cup uh, due to which the name of the rotor is given so it is the simplest structure attached symmetrical to a vertical shaft so the drag force on the concave surface of the cup facing the wind is more than the on the convex surface as a result the structure starts rotating lift also plays a small part the cups crossing the wind experiences a small lift because of their convex surface deflect the wind and causes a pressure reduction so this type of rotor cannot carry a load therefore can be used for so this type of rotor we are not using for power generation but it can be used for measuring the wind speed and the apparatus is known as cup anemometer so it's called cup anemometer then there is second rotor that is sevenius rotor so sevenius rotor works like the cup rotor but uh, the rotor consists of two half cylindrical so as you can see that if you cut a cylinder from between so you will get two types of cup one and two so these two cups are uh, arranged in s shape so as you can see it is arranged in s shape and it is also known as s rotor it is also known as s rotor so the rotor works on the drag force produced by the blade so as you can see uh, the drag force produced by the blades 
and it has high starting torque but very low efficiency it can extract power from very slow wind making it working most of the time so this are used for very low power applications it is suitable for pumping application with high starting torque so if you need if you need to pump the water it can be used then the next rotor is uh, which is used for high application it is darius darius rotor so all this the name sevenius darius uh, they got the name from their inventor so their inventor's name was sevius and darius so this rotor works due to the lift force produced by the aerofoil so the blades are shaped like a turning rope so if you turn a rope so they are shaped in such a way so which minimizes the bending stresses caused by centrifugal force so caused by centrifugal force so the this darius rotor is used for very large scale power generation so as you can see the first cup was very, was not able to generate power the second cvs was able to generate power but very low and this darius is very high used for very high power generation so uh the power coefficient is considerably better than the s type rotor so the aerodynamic force so the aerodynamic force on the blade reverses in every revolution so this reverses in every revolution so which may cause the alternative stresses so which may effect in fatigue so if forces direction are reversed continuously so which may cause fatigue so this along with centrifugal force complicates the design of the blade so the machine is not at all self starting so it can be started using electrical generator as motor at high wind speed it becomes difficult to control the output because the pitch of the blade cannot be changed so for better performance and safety of the blades gearbox and generator it is desirable to limit the output level so much below its maximum possible value so this is an disadvantage of this rotor so which limits the maximum possible output then next there are then next there is musgrove rotor this is called musgrove rotor so it works on lift force so it has an h as you can see h shaped blades with fixed pith the blades are attached vertically to the horizontal cross arm so uh, the the horizontal cross arm so this is an horizontal cross arm so the blades are arranged vertically on that so power control is achieved by controlled folding of the blades as you can see 
in as you can see in the next direction that the blades are being folded so by folding of the blades you can control the power so inclining the blades to a vertical provides an effective means of altering blades so angle of attack enhance controlling the power output so this can help in controlling the power output then next the next rotor is magnus effect rotor so what happens in magnus effect so this also this is also the name of the rotors are given by the inventor who invented it so in magnus effect so when the cylinder so as you can see this is this is a cylinder in between the so cylinder is spun in a wind stream so if wind is moving in this direction and if cylinder is spinning in the wind stream so the translational forces are produced perpendicular to the wind stream so the forces produced are at the 90 degree as you can see here free body diagram is drawn that the drag force is in this direction so the lift force uh, will in this direction so resultant force is in this direction so magnus effect rotors consist of spinning cylinders so when the stationary horizontal cylinder is rotated about the axis in the cross wind it will experience a lift force so this will experience a lift force so the effect is equally applicable to vertical cylinders being rotated about its axis in a cross wind so this effect is called magnus effect so it will experience a force perpendicular to its axis so it's at a 90 degree so which will cause its it to move so this will cause it to move in direction essentially perpendicular to that of wind the concept consists of several tall vertical cylinders that are rotated about their axis in presence of wind so the what the resultant of the lift and drag forces so the resultant more in direction of lift because the larger the value propels the cylinder horizontally along the track so it it uh, d d depends more on lift forces so this was the types of rotor which we have discussed now now we will just plot uh, difference between what were the main main differences uh, between vertical axis and horizontal axis rotor so i will just uh, name the differences between the rotors uh, what differences we have seen so first horizontal axis rotor and vertical axis first difference is that the axis of the rotation is in parallel to the air stream okay so it is in this parallel direction while in vertical axis it is in perpendicular direction then in horizontal your control mechanism is required to adjust the rotor around vertical axis to keep it in facing the wind so the direction mechanism is required always while in vertical axis no orientation is required to the of the rotor so this turbines can generate power with wind for coming from any direction so, so these are the main two difference then the third third difference then the third difference uh, is that the power so power coefficient 
uh, wait a second so horizontal and vertical so power coefficient and the tip speed ratio are high for uh, horizontal axis while the power coefficient and tip speed ratio are low for vertical axis then uh, next difference initial cost and maintenance cost is high while the initial and maintenance cost are low then suitable for large scale power generation large scale power generation suitable for low scale power generation then the rotor is mounted on the top of high tower it is experienced higher velocity wind this is more energy output so it is on the top the rotor is generally mounted near ground it is mounted near ground proximity it experiences lower velocity wind and this yields less energy output so this are the main difference and one more that is a heavy uh, nacelle containing box gearbox generator is mounted at the top that is hub uh, mounted on top thus design and installation is very complex the nacelle is not required because the gearbox unit etc located the ground everything is located on the ground thus design and installation is very very simple so these are the main differences between horizontal and vertical axis turbine so i hope you got uh, everything so from next lecture we will see design consideration in a wind turbine so thank you very much